Welcome to Mod My Evo 8, brought to you by our Patreon supporters. That's right, everyone. It's finally time for our Patreon supporter build. If you've been a supporter of the channel for many years, you'll recall about two years ago now, we did a promotion where if you signed up to support us on Patreon, you were entered, entered into a raffle for a chance to win a quick build on our channel. And our winner is Robert Young from Ohio who chose his Evo 8. Robert's actually got a really interesting car background and when he came and dropped the car off here a few months ago, he gave us his whole backstory, which we shot video of and we have since lost that video. So. To give you the Coles Notes version, uh, this Evo is actually his second Evo and it's one that he bought recently just before the pandemic and it's kind of been waiting to do anything to after he won our promotion. So it did come with a few mods on it and as you can see, he did drive it up here in the dead of winter, which is why it's filthy and it's on these uh, Evo 10 wheels, which I think look really good along with some winter tires. There are a few mods on it, but uh, there's nothing on here that he's married to. So he pretty much gave us carte blanche. He said, you know, do whatever you want. I trust you guys, have at it. But obviously he's a performance guy. He does want to go to the track with the car a little bit. It's not going to be a pure track build. He does want to street drive it as well. So with those sort of guidelines in mind, we're just going to get right down to it, starting with cleaning this thing up. But uh, we have been washing cars a lot on the channel lately. So rather than boring you with another slow-mo sequence of car washing, we're just going to get to it right like this. And there you have it everybody. This car does clean up well. White always looks good on video, but uh, up close this car does have a lot of flaws in the paint. This car was from California, so there's some paint fade on the roof. No rust, but there is a lot of paint issues with it. Wow, what a difference polishing some headlights makes. The Evo itself is such a, I like, I don't want to call it classic, but I guess it is classic. Oh, it's classic, it's, at, yeah. at this point, it's it is. It's a modern classic, I think. Yeah, yeah, and to me, like, it just has such classic styling. It's, it's Evo, everybody knows what an Evo looks like. It doesn't really need much in terms of add-ons. It's got a big f wing in the rear, like the front is so aggressive. I think the eights do lack a little bit of lower chin though. You can see it just kind of comes down and rounds down like this and doesn't have that kind of presence. So what we've decided to do is install this carbon fiber rec speed front lip. I think it's gonna add a lot of character to the front of this car. You can see with the rec speed stuff, it looks like they have drilled holes here. So this shouldn't be too bad an install. I will be pulling this front lip though. And then we're gonna figure out why there is a random screw here, people, because these things, you know, someone probably, one of the plastic pieces was broken and they said, you know what, I'll just put a screw in there. Who's gonna notice that? I figured it was for this piece of plastic and sure enough, this screw is to hold this in. I assume there was a bracket that's broken on the bumper here. In order to fix this hole here, what I'm gonna use is a little bit of white silicone into the hole. And then Dave will be able to, to touch it up here. Man, there's quite a bit of rust from that damn screw. Yeah. Which I don't love. I mean, it's into plastic, so it's not yeah, gonna Yeah, it's, it's not, gonna not a huge it, deal. But... Really all I'm trying to do here is make sure that uh, that the hole is filled so Dave can have a little bit of... Uh, uh, something to touch something up to put, on Yeah, there. yeah, exactly. And then for the bottom, we found this uh, JB Weld plastic bonder to work really well. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of that, put it on there, stick it up, and we'll let it uh, set over, I guess this is 15 minutes, so in 15 minutes, this should be ready to go. Putting the last screw in here, and wow, 
the fitment on this is really, really good. I'd actually say the the bumper is the sore spot now. You can see it's got a couple of dings here versus, uh, versus this, like the fitment right on the edge is pretty much perfect. It's a slight little gap here. I can probably tighten up a little bit, but wow. Yeah, and man, it looks so, so much better. Let's get this thing on the ground and admire it. In the rear here, this car does have a bit of a carbon uh, cover here around the bumper. <laughs> it looks like it needs a little bit of clear coat, so we may give it a, a quick shot of that. Um, the, the thing that I really don't like about the 8s is the chrome housing on the headlights just doesn't match with tail anything. Lights, yeah. Sorry, the taillights, yeah. So um, I do have a couple options here. This one will for sure make this car go faster because this is actually off of Ben Lin's white Evo 9 uh, of gears and gasoline and that car is very fast. So this is probably a good horsepower mod. Um, for a cleanliness look, I do love the seven tail lights. This one's a tough one. Let me know in the comments, what do you guys think? I, I, I do like the red ones from a perspective of like OEM cleanliness. Um, but Dave mentioned these ones, they, they just have more depth. And I think on a white car, they really do look good. They, they certainly pop a lot more and they kind of give it more of that, I don't know, the JDM-ness of what you would think. So uh, what do you say, DP? Are we going this, are we going this? Well, you know my vote, I'm, I'm going for the, the black though. Yeah, yeah, I think we're gonna stick with these. One little final touch we're gonna put on the rear end here is this gurney flap from Rexpeed. And as you can see, it's in this like piano black finish. Do they offer this in carbon too, PT? No, they, they offer it in a, a variety of colors. But so if you carbon. wanted to get it in white, for example, for this car, you could get it in white. Yep. I just decided, Black was the way to go. For sure it is. It, it'll match the carbon nicely. All right, Robert, there you go. 100 pounds of downforce with that gurney flap. And uh, now we're expecting you to show up to grid life and uh, beat up on Ben from Gears and Gasoline. And the real reason we put these taillights in there for, for you is so that you can go there and show Ben what his taillights look like on the racetrack. Diving into the wheel wells here, and that's because we are gonna replace the coilovers that are on Robert's car. He's got an old set of Oleans on here that he says are blown, and we thought, the best path for him is these Fortune Auto 500s. The 500s are their street setup, and we know he does want to drive this car on the street. He's even talking about maybe driving it year round, so we know the 500s will deliver really good street performance, and you can certainly go to the track or your local autocross on these and gain performance as well. But if Robert gets more serious about this being like a track car, then you don't have to go and buy another set of coilovers. You can just send these back to, to Fortune Auto, and they will convert them to 510s. You don't have to you know, replace a bunch of these components. A lot of this can be reused to keep your cost down in the conversion to, to being a 510, which is their single adjustable track-based setup. Or if you wanna go really big, you can even have them convert these into their Dreadnought Pro two ways or three ways. Really the sky's the limit, but you start off with a lot of parts here that are going to be reusable, like the camber plates and the collars and that sort of thing. So that is the beauty of the Fortunatos and uh, we know the 500s ride great on the street. So let's throw those on here and we're pretty sure you're gonna love the way this puppy rides.
for a Cali car, this axle nut is rather rusty. So we're gonna hit it with some fluid film black just to prevent the rust from getting any worse and to make it look prettier because when you black out the rust, it does look much better. You don't wanna get this on your rotor. Down here, it's fine. Actually, this will help the wheel from not welding itself onto the hub. But uh, the coilovers went in like cake and we did do a brake pad swap and that's because he had some brand new actually EBC yellows on there but I've never tried them. Pete has tried EBC yellows, he wasn't a fan and he had some really nice pads in his stash because he's owned so many Evos. So we put Winmax uh, W5s in the front which are a true track pad. Those can take serious track abuse. However, they might be a little noisy and dusty on the street. So Robert, you might wanna go back to the EBCs for the street and use these for the track. In the rear, you saw us put in those uh, Project Mew uh, Titan Kai's, I think they were called, is that right, Peach? Yeah, H HC the Titan yeah. Kai's. They are more of a hybrid street track pad, but they do have a really impressive heat range from zero to 800 F, so they can certainly handle the heat. And in the rear, you don't put as much heat in it anyway. So we think these will be great in the rear. By the way, Robert, what's going on in the trunk here? I didn't know you were an audio guy. I thought you were like a hardcore performance guy. I mean, an Evo with, what? how many DP, amps This is stuff? technically a SSL Evo 5. Uh, sorry, Evo 8. Eight yeah. So um, it does have a, the like upgraded audio. So yeah. I think that Memphis speaker is a factory option. The way it fits around the ship, yeah, it yeah. must be. But, but the rest of it certainly that isn't. That is definitely not. And to be fair to Robert, I'm only pulling his leg. He bought this car and didn't really touch it. So this definitely came from California. So there was some icy hot stunt out Ooh, there who was yeah. rolling around low on his Olins, blowing those out and thumping the beats instead of uh, making that uh, 4G63 be a soundtrack. So uh, we know you're gonna fix that, Robert. We're gonna help you, but we're not gonna pull this stuff out of there because Pete's had enough audio nightmares in his life from his M5. And now for what is one of the most satisfying parts of any of our quick builds, and that is the wheel and tire package. Because what upgrades the look of your car more than wheels and tires? And for uh, Robert's Evo, we have gone with Anki's new TS7 wheel. Obviously it is a seven spoke and it is uh, built using their MAT technology, which is basically Anki's uh, form of innovative flow forming of the wheel. So it is a cast wheel, but through the flow forming uh, method, which you could read more about on speed.academy if you want more information on how that technology works. So you get a wheel with very similar properties to a forged wheel, but without the production cost of it. So you get a affordable wheel that's very light and very strong. These are an 18 by nine and a half plus 38 offset. Uh, and the tires, we have obviously gone with Continental Extreme Contact Sports because these are our go-to summer tire for pretty much every project around here. They are a very good 300 tre 320 tread wear summer tire. They've got excellent rain performance because of these big sipes and the grooves there, but you can also see on the shoulders, they've got a nice big block here, which gives you excellent turn and response and a ton of lateral grip. Time for our maiden test fit here. And we should mention that this wheel only comes in very limited sizes. In an 18 by nine and a half, it only comes in a plus 38 offset, which is a little bit high for an Evo. <laughs> really, we knew that we might have issues with caliper clearance and it turns out, we are just touching the oh, caliper. Oh man. However, PT foresaw this and in his great wisdom, he ordered some wheel spacers. So these are ST suspension uh, wheel spacers and we really like them because they have this plastic centering ring. So these are interchangeable. So you can kind of like, they live with the car or if you want to take them off and, and transfer them to another car, they can certainly be, uh, be done in that sense. So that's a five mil on right there. I did order different sizes because I didn't know exactly what would fit and what wouldn't. It's really difficult in these cases because some wheels, you know, with a plus 40 will still fit because of the way they're designed and some won't because of the way the spoke is designed. So it's kind of difficult to know. And unfortunately, oh my God, this is like, so the, the five is still too close. You can see it's, I would not run a wheel that close. And there is the seven and a half. And as I, you can see, I did just reuse that center trim ring, which is really, really nice. So let's put this on here. And man, that looks like it's gonna be perfect. There we go. I think we're gonna have good clearance there. This is what uh, big brake life is like. However, we now have the problem with the engagement on the stud. And I guarantee you we're not gonna get, I think this minimum six and a half turns that ST recommends. All right, let's see here. Yeah, you can see that is, man, maybe, maybe three turns yeah. before it stops off. So um, 
we're, we're, we're gonna have an, a bit of an issue here. Uh, we do need longer studs and I think, I think I have some in the stash because I didn't think about ordering the studs because I thought the five mil or the seven and a half mil would be fine. So let me just run upstairs, see if I have something in the stash. Oh, thank God the stash comes through again. See how critical it is just to hoard parts, DP? That's right. Look at this, look at this. Evo, Evo 7 ARP studs. Um, I only have two of these and I have two Subaru WRX wheels studs. There are countless videos out there on how to change these studs on Evos and uh, we're not gonna go through the full how-to here. However, I will show you a very neat and what I think is an important tool to have uh, anytime you're changing out these studs and that is this right here. So you can see what a lot of people usually do is they'll just put a bunch of washers stack in and that just creates a ton of stress. I find and heat and this way you're protecting your stud and making it easy with this tool here. So look at that. It just like goes in so smoothly and easily. And like I said, it just takes all of the tension and friction out of this job and really makes it just go so much smoother. And this is not an expensive tool. Of course, anything that we use, I'll make sure we are linking in the description if you guys are interested in buying it. Extended studs in place, spacer on, and we do look like this is gonna be perfect fitment in my opinion, that seven and a half mil spacer. Uh, we still do probably have to add a little bit of camber, but we will see uh, a couple things to note here. We don't have the right lug nuts on here right now, so we're gonna change these out for proper black ones so they look nicer than uh, stole than these off Connie. Yeah, that's right. These Poor are like a, girl. a weird black chrome. And uh, let's jump to the rear and see what our fitment looks like. And in the rear here, the fitment looks like it's going to clear, which is kind of crazy. You know, you see guys putting plus 22 offset uh, wheels onto these cars and there's a lot of work that needs to go into fitting something like that. We wanna make sure that this is still on stock body metal. We don't wanna to have to go roll in the fenders or do anything like that unless it's absolutely necessary. Um, and ideally what I would like to do is put a set of extended wheel studs into the rear here because it, it just doesn't match the look perfectly. Thankfully, the, uh, the extended lugs that we have do kind of like mask it, but in a perfect world, I would get those uh, ARP studs and put them in. If we can get a set locally here in time, we will certainly do that. What do you guys think? I am loving it. A lot of subtle changes, but I think it really upgrades the style of this car quite dramatically. I'm loving the whole black and white theme. I think it complements my beard perfectly and I think it'll uh, complement Robert's sense of aesthetic is very nicely too. Obviously the carbon lip and the gloss wheels all tie in nicely with like the tinted out, wheel, or tinted out windows and black trim and those black housing tail lights I think tie in really nicely too. So overall I'm really pleased with the way the car is looking and as for ride height, we did measure his old coilovers, so we set it to the exact same ride height, assuming that is Robert's preferred ride height for the car. So uh, yeah, all in all, really happy with the way it's turning out. And in the next episode, we are gonna dive under the hood and do some very tasty power mods and add some uh, other functionality and reliability mods to the car because we do want this thing to be a ripper, but a, re a reliable one at that. And uh, thank you, Robert, for your patience. This draw happened a year and a half ago and he had to wait through the pandemic for us to get to this car. So thank you, Robert, for that. And thank you to everyone on Patreon who made this giveaway, this uh, experience for Robert possible. And if you guys want to support us on Patreon, by all means, do jump on to patreon.com slash speedacademy, where you'll see we have various tiers avail available with different types of uh, rewards that are associated with it. And if we do another promotion like this, obviously we will uh, let you guys know here on the YouTube channel as well as on Instagram and on Facebook. So 
Uh, follow along there as well if you want to get some behind the scenes looks at all of our projects, including this one. So thanks again for watching everyone. Hope to see you on Patreon and hope to see you in the next one here on YouTube as well.